So hello, this is uh, your going over of chapter 23 homework um, for AP Physics 2. So we went over a lot of these in class, but I want to make sure you have both the PDF and just a screencast to help I remember things. I screwed up because <coughs> I initially was going to do... <coughs> Ooh, pardon me. Um, question 7. I like it, but I didn't assign it. So that's an oopsie. Um, for question three, I had three, we had three resistors here in series, and this graph for voltage, this was the steepest region, this was the least steep. The current had to be the same in all of them because this is a series circuit. And current's the same everywhere within a given series circuit. Well, it's not the same in all series circuits because they can have different voltages and different resistances. But within a given series circuit, current's the same everywhere. So in this case, if this is the steepest, it's going to have the greatest change in voltage, and therefore that would have the greatest resistance, since V equals I times R. <coughs> For question nine, you're given... <coughs> Goodness gracious. Sorry. These diagrams asked to um, rank the currents and the voltages. Well, the voltage across AB is the same as the voltage across CD, because both of those are completely surrounding the same battery. So it's the full voltage of the circuit. To rank the currents, <clears throat> the current, and I don't know if I did this, I think I'll actually have to go ahead and do this then for B. I1 is greater than I2, which equals I3. Ugh, I don't know where I put that. Um, so essentially here, because this has less resistance, there's more current. In this circuit, there's less current, but that current is the same in both places. 36 we had a good discussion about. So in series, the 40-watt bulb is going to be brighter. The reason is normally these bulb ratings in terms of power are in terms of uh, parallel circuits because that's how our homes are wired. So you could go back and figure out that the <coughs> resistance in a 40-watt bulb P equals V times I, and then V equals I times R. Or you could say P equals V squared divided by R. Either way, you can figure out the resistance. That ends up being 360 ohms for a 40-watt bulb, 240 ohms for a 60-watt bulb. So that kind of makes sense because less resistance in a bulb that ends up being brighter. <clears throat> and brightness is the thing that's most um, related to power in terms of light bulbs. Well, now if we think about that, now if we put them in series, we only have 120 volts and it's going to be split between the two bulbs. But this bulb has more resistance than the 60 watt bulb. And so therefore it would take a greater percentage of the voltage to overcome this than it would this. And by the way, the power rating for these in series is now no longer 40 watts and 60 watts. Both of them are lower than the rated values, but the 60 watt one is much lower because it has less voltage compared to the 40 watt bulb. <clears throat> for pro and we'll do uh, an activity in class related to that. I think you'll like it. For problem nine, I have a two amp bulb here, or pardon me, current is two amps, it says. Um, and it's asking you to draw a circuit. <clears throat> and it says basically to start here. Well, I should have probably drawn the graph, but it basically goes down and then back up and then down some again. So if the total current in the circuit was 2 amps and I had a 6-volt power source, I know I needed 3 ohms total resistance. Of that, <clears throat> the less steep drop of the um, uh, graph pardon me, was first, so that would be a 1 ohm drop, then add the 6 volts back in, then the 2 ohm drop. So basically I said you're starting in the lower left-hand corner and going clockwise. For P21, I had four different arrangements I could put the resistors in. I think that's all of them. <clears throat> so I could have three in parallel, in which case the equivalent resistance is 333 ohms, three in series, equivalent resistance is 3,000 ohms, two in parallel with each other, and then one in series with that. Well, this equivalent part would be 500 ohms plus 1,000, that's 1,500 ohms. The last way I could think of was to have two in series with each other in one branch of a parallel circuit. So that means this top branch has 2,000 ohms, the bottom branch has 1,000 ohms, 
solve for that and I get 667 ohms total resistance. For P22, I was given this diagram, 7.5 volts going in. They're added up because both batteries are pointing in the same direction. <clears throat> I lose 3.5 volts here, 2 volts here. That means that I have 2 volts left to lose here, since 5.5 volts has already been used up. So now I can figure out the current on the circuit. 2 volts across this resistor divided by its resistance gives me 0.0133 amps. And so <clears throat> that's the current supplied by the batteries. You could also figure out that this was 150 ohm resistor, and this would be somewhat more, probably 250-ish. I didn't figure that out. But the main thing is that current is V divided by R. I know the voltage across this has to be 2 volts from reasons mentioned earlier. For problem 30, this is the one I told you I took a whole page to solve. I did that on the board similarly. <clears throat> I don't know if it, I mean, this is a complicated circuit, right? And the key thing is just handling one step at a time. So simplifying from the outside in seemed like the best way to simplify this. And I did color code things here. Down here I got so squished I had to go to the right, and then bottom, and then to the bottom left. So I figured this out. I didn't draw the final circle with just a single 4.44 ohm resistor, but I used that to figure out the total current. <clears throat> this one we talked extensively about in class. This is sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Basically bottom branch of a parallel circuit, middle branch of a parallel circuit, top branch of a parallel circuit. So there are three separate paths for that electricity to go. The current through each 10 ohm resistor is one amp. I've drawn the directions of the current. And it's based on the fact that this must be at 10 volts. 0.3 is 10 volts, 0.2 is 0 volts, and 4 is 0 volts. That's because these points 2 and 4 are touching this region of 0 volts with no resistance in the, eh, in the wire. These points 1 and 3 are touching the part of the circuit at 10 volts with no resistance in the wire. Total <coughs> resistance to the current, 3.33 ohms. Problem 72 is the last one. Um, I don't know if we went over this in class. I'm putting down here the order in which I did things. So I simplified the circuit first, simplified those two things into a 6 ohm resistor, this 6 and then this 6 become a 12 ohm resistor. 1 12th and 1 24th become an 8 ohm resistor. So I end up with 4 and 8 in series. That adds up to 12 ohms. 24 volts divided by 12 ohms is 2 amps. So I can get that the total current is <coughs> 2 amps. Total voltage is 24 volts. I can get the power rating if I want by 24 times uh, 2. It'll be 48 watts. But then I'm going to attack this first because it's all by itself. It's easy to figure out. I know that's 2 amps going through there. 2 amps times 4 ohms gives me 8 volts. Then if you look, what I ended up doing is I ended up doing this second. Actually, that's weird. Third and fourth here. So I figured this branch was all by itself. So after I've gone through here, which used 8 volts, going from this point all the way back down to here would also take, uh, would take 16 volts. So since this outer 24 ohm resistor, the one with a dot above it, is the only thing in that path, that would have to be 16. Or, uh, oh, did I screw up? I think I screwed up. Ah, I'm going to have to look at this. Um, yeah, nope, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Okay, 24 minus 8 is 16 volts. I was looking at the wrong 24 ohm resistor. I put one with a dot and one with a star. Ugh. So that's the third thing I did. And then in this branch, 16 volts divided by 24 ohms gives me 0.67 amps. So do that third and fourth. That means that I know that the total voltage across this whole mess here, which is equivalent to 12 ohms, is also 16 volts. 16 volts divided by 12 ohms gives me 1.33 amps. That's what I attack next. So I'm thinking whole branch now. And then the current, uh, the voltage across this 6 ohm resistor is that current times just that 6 ohm resistor. That's 8 volts. 
If I know the voltage across this whole component is 16 volts, which I already figured out here, and I used 8 volts here, that means the voltage across either of these would also be 8 volts. So that's what I did 7th. And then the last one was the voltage divided by the resistance. So 8 volts divided by 8 ohms is 1 amp. 8 volts divided by 24 ohms, 0.33 amps. So hopefully this helps, and hopefully you're getting a hang of how to solve for series parallel and combined circuits.